In this video, we're going to explore the origin of 50 Norwegian Christmas traditions. Let's begin by exploring the etymology of the word Christmas. Christ comes from ancient Greek Christos, meaning the anointed one, which is a calc of the Hebrew word for Messiah. Mass comes from Latin Misa, referring to the dismissal of the congregation. Why do we celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December? It's a controversial subject because there are several competing theories regarding the date of Jesus' birth. We do know, however, that the earliest known Christmas celebration occurred on the 25th of December, 336 AD in Rome. For some people, Christmas Day is not just a day of celebration, but a day of copulation. In the UK, the 26th of September, nine months after Christmas Day, is the most popular day to be born on, whilst the 25th and 26th of December are the least popular days to be born on in both the UK and Norway. We don't know the exact origin of the Advent period, but we do know it was celebrated in 480 AD. The word Advent comes from Latin Adventus, meaning arrival or approach, referring to the coming of Jesus Christ. Historically, it was a period of fasting and penitence, but today it's when people start putting up Christmas decorations, send Christmas cards and visit Christmas markets. In this tradition, each candle represents a Sunday leading up to Christmas. On the first Sunday, the first candle is lit. On the second Sunday, the first and second candles are lit, and so on. This tradition is likely derived from the Advent wreath, which was invented in Hamburg, Germany in 1839 by Johann Henrik Wischen. Children at a mission school kept asking him whether it was Christmas yet, so Johann built a large wooden ring with 24 small red candles and four large white candles. Each day a red candle was lit, while on Sunday one of the large white candles was lit. This custom spread to German Catholics in the 1920s and then outside of Germany in the 1930s. Over time, the red candles disappeared and only the white candles were lit. The first modern advent calendar with small hatches was invented in Germany in 1904. In Norway, advent calendars became popular after World War II, with the first printed calendar arriving in 1947, produced by the Norwegian Girl Scout Association. This tradition isn't limited to print though. In Scandinavia, there are advent calendar TV and radio shows. These consist of 24 episodes that air between the 1st and 24th of December. Although this tradition began in Sweden in 1957 for children, these days there are a variety of shows made for adult audiences. Although winter markets existed in Europe in the late 13th century, the first Christmas market is said to be Dresden's Stützelmarkt, which was first held in 1434. It took a while for Christmas markets to catch on in Norway though, as the first one was only held in Trondheim in 2003. Europe has a long history of seasons being personified, and winter is no exception. In Britain we have Father Christmas and Jack Frost, the Greeks have Boreas, the Norse have Ullur, and the Slavic cultures have Dead Moros. Other figures such as the Dutch Santa Claus and the American Santa Claus evolved from the historical figure of Saint Nicholas. Norway's version is a supernatural being called Julenisse, whose name is also derived from Saint Nicholas, but that's where the similarities end. Julenisse is a 60 cm tall bearded farm spirit with a red cap that resembles a garden gnome. He is said to be either an invisible guardian of the farm or possibly the spirit of the actual founder of the farm. He protects animals and helps with chores, however, he has a short temper and great care must be taken not to offend him, otherwise things will go missing or he may even kill livestock. It was common for Norwegians to leave a bowl of porridge for him outside at Christmas as a gesture of goodwill, a tradition that is still practiced today by 15% of Norwegians. In Norway, the first factory began producing red caps in 1798, but it has a long history that dates back to the classical period. It later became associated with liberty and freedom during the American and French revolutions. During the war period, under Nazi occupation, the Germans banned red caps because they were associated with the Norwegian resistance. Defiant Norwegian illustrators such as Torbjörn Egnard hid messages in their illustrations, such as Santa Claus searching for his red cap. Although Norway doesn't have Santa Claus or Lapland, it does have plenty of reindeer, 215,000 of them in fact. The word reindeer has an interesting etymology, because it's one of the hundreds of words that came into English via Old Norse. In early December, it's time to send Christmas cards to our loved ones, a tradition that originates in Britain. The first Christmas card was illustrated by John Calcott Horsley and introduced to the market in 1843 by Henry Cole. The tradition made its way to Germany, to Denmark, then arrived in Norway in 1883. Early Norwegian Christmas cards featured the aforementioned Nisse. True to their pagan roots, they weren't cute and cuddly, Instead, they were shown fighting, getting drunk, or falling asleep. It wasn't long before sending Christmas cards became commonplace by the 1900s. The first Christmas stamp, where a portion of the profit goes to charity, was invented in neighboring Denmark in 1904. Until 1983, the cost of sending a card in Norway wasn't dependent on the weight or distance. It was actually based on the number of words. If you kept your Christmas message to five words or fewer, you'd save 20 erre. This led to Gujul and Gott Nittor becoming a common message. 
In 2016, between 10 to 13 million cards were sent in Norway. Advent also means it's time for the Christmas decorations to go up, with 90% of Norwegians decorating in some form for Christmas. 70% have a Christmas tablecloth or runner, 36% have Christmas curtains, 29% roll or iron tablecloths, napkins or curtains, and 9% have Christmas bedding. The colors red and green are believed to be associated with Christmas because they were the only colors available to pagans looking to decorate their homes during winter. For some cultures, they had religious significance. For example, the Celts believed that holly was a symbol of fertility and eternal life because it stayed green throughout the winter. The prominence of red possibly derives from the color of the holly berry or because St. Nicholas's bishop robes were red. The first time the modern Christmas tree is mentioned is in Alsace in 1576. German missionaries introduced the custom to the United States and when Queen Victoria married her German husband, it became a British tradition. The first time the Christmas tree is mentioned in Norway is in 1822. Initially, they were exhibited in wealthy homes, churches, and public places. Later, they began entering regular homes between 1880 and 1900. The Vatican was extremely hesitant to take part in this tradition, only putting up its first Christmas tree in 1982. Today, 90% of Norwegians have a Christmas tree, of which about one quarter are artificial and the rest are real. Decorating the Christmas tree is also a German tradition. Martin Luther is rumored to have been the first person to decorate a Christmas tree with the addition of candles. Later, the first Christmas tree lights were installed by Edward Hibbard Johnson of Edison's Electric Light Company in 1882. Christmas tree lights were first commercially available in 1890, but it had to be wired in by an electrician, so it took until the 1930s for them to become widespread. The tradition of singing and dancing around a Christmas tree also comes from Germany, where it began somewhere between the 16th and 17th century. It's first attested in Denmark in 1818 and in Norway in 1840. The Christmas tree has a very special place in British and Norwegian relations. During the Nazi invasion of Norway, King Haakon VII and the Norwegian government refused to capitulate to Nazi demands, and in retaliation, the Nazis attempted to assassinate them, bombing a small town they were thought to be staying in. Mercifully, they survived and escaped on the HMS Devonshire from Tromsø to London on the 7th of June 1940. They returned to Norway on the same date, five years later. As a show of gratitude, Norway has sent multiple Christmas trees to the UK every year since 1947. Bergen sends a Christmas tree that's displayed in Newcastle city centre, and Oslo sends one that's displayed in Trafalgar Square in London. Welcome to this wonderful occasion the 72nd lighting up ceremony of the Oslo Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square. The Trafalgar Square lighting ceremony is held on the first Thursday of December and is attended by Londoners and Norwegians living in the city. Ladies and gentlemen, hi all of you Norske som also are here. To me, this tree is both a token of our gratitude and also a symbol of enduring friendship between our cities in the past, present, and indeed in the future. God jul og godt nytt år, alle sammen. One, two, three, two, one. The Julistana is the most popular Christmas plant. Originating in Mexico as a dye and treatment for fever, it first arrived in Europe around 1800. The large vibrant red leaves resemble flowers and today, 6 million of these are sold in Norway during the festive season. The Advent Star is a window decoration that represents the Star of Bethlehem. It's based on the Moravian Star, a three-dimensional star that was invented in the 1830s in Germany. They became popular in the Nordic countries in the interwar period. There are two decorations that have unknown origins. The Julistrampe, or Christmas stocking, is supposed to date back to the time of St. Nicholas. However, the first time it is attested is in 1810, appearing in the background of a poster printed in the USA about Dutch Christmas traditions. The other decoration with unknown origins is this form of the fakkel, or torch, which I couldn't find any information about. Julelus, or Christmas lights, were invented in Britain. In 1881, the Savoy Theatre was the first building in the world to be lit entirely with electricity. The inventor Joseph Swan supplied the theatre with 1,200 incandescent lamps, each one drawing just under 75 watts of power from an off-site generator. In 1882, Joseph created a battery-powered version of the lights for Iolanthe, a comic opera. They were small enough to be attached to the fairy costumes, which is why in Britain they're known as fairy lights. 
The Julinek is a bundle of oats tied together with a ribbon. It's a welcome source of food for birds during Norway's harsh winter months. It was first attested in Norway in 1753, and unfortunately, it was condemned by priests for being a pagan custom. Historians believe that the Julinek was either a form of protection against evil spirits, a potential bribe to birds so they wouldn't damage next year's crop, or simply an offering in the spirit of Christmas. The snowman's origins aren't known, but we do have information about its earliest depictions. The earliest known illustration was discovered by Bob Eckstein, an American writer and illustrator. He found it in a prayer book written in 1380, which currently resides in the Royal Library of the Netherlands. The earliest known photograph of a snowman was taken in 1853 by Welsh photographer Mary Dillwyn. And finally, in January 1494, a 19-year-old Michelangelo was commissioned by the ruler of Florence to sculpt a snowman in the courtyard of his palace. It was described by his biographer as very beautiful, but unfortunately there are no other contemporary accounts of what it looked like. On the 23rd of December, it's Lille Julaften, or Little Christmas Eve. This is the day the house receives one last tidy up and Norwegians put the finishing touches to their Christmas decorations. Let's take a minute to talk about Christmas entertainment. If you decide to learn Norwegian, you'll soon learn how the naming conventions are A, incredibly literal, and B, absolutely hilarious. For example, the kettle is called a water cooker, the vacuum cleaner is a dust sucker, the fridge is a cooling cabinet, and the TV is fjernsyn, which translates to remote vision. When I was young, I looked forward to watching the animated movie The Snowman, and the only Fools and Horses Christmas special. Christmas TV in Norway has a surprisingly older, more pan-European flavour. On the 23rd of December, Kvelden för Kvelden, or the evening before the evening, is a light entertainment show that has been broadcast every year since 1980. It's regularly amongst the most watched shows in Norway, with incredible 1.25 million viewers in 2020. If you need any evidence of just how progressive Norway is, look no further than the fact that they let ginger people host primetime TV completely unsupervised. It's during this show that Dinner for One, or The Countess and the Butler, is broadcast. It's an English language comedy sketch filmed with British actors in Germany, yet until recently it was virtually unheard of in the UK. On Christmas Eve, the 1973 German-Czech adventure film Tre Nutte Till Askepot, or Three Wishes for Cinderella, is broadcast. For reasons I don't quite understand, all the voices were dubbed into Norwegian by one person. I'm using the word dubbed quite loosely because the original voices can still be heard and he doesn't seem to make any real attempt to sync his voice to the lip movements. Originally broadcast in 1975, it's been shown every year since 1996. It was restored in 2015, and it received a high-budget Norwegian language remake in 2021. Later in the afternoon, the 1958 Disney animated Christmas special From All of Us to All of You is broadcast. In Norway, it's called Donald Duck and His Friends, and it's been broadcast on NRK every year since 1979. Church bells were first sanctioned by Pope Sabinian in 604 AD. On Christmas Eve, they ring out in the early evening to signal that Christmas Eve has begun. 539,647 Norwegians attended church on Christmas Eve 2019, according to Statistics Norway. The highest per capita church attendance was seen in Agder and Telemark, while the lowest was here in Bork. Church attendance has been steadily declining since 2006, when there were 627,000 attendees. Julibanks is the tradition of baking a variety of biscuits for the festive season. The custom of ideally baking seven different types was first attested only around 100 years ago in West Norway. Until the mid-19th century, lefse and flatbre were commonly baked for Christmas. Here's a chart detailing how many cakes Norwegians bake during Christmas. Clearly, 53% of Norwegians need to step up their game. The next table lists Norway's favourite Christmas biscuits, the English translation and the origin of the biscuit. Have you ever wondered where Christmas spices come from? The fragrant blend of cinnamon, cardamom, cloves and nutmeg are synonymous with Christmas baking, yet their origins lie far outside Europe. During the colonial era, cinnamon and cardamom were native to both India and Indonesia, and cloves and nutmeg were native to Indonesia. It's no coincidence that the British mixed spice blend was first attested during British rule in India, or the Dutch Spekulaaskruiden appears during their rule in Indonesia. They were the forerunners of the American pumpkin pie spice blend, which was first attested in 1890. In India, the blend of cinnamon, cloves, and cardamom is the foundation of garam masala, the spice blend that flavors restaurant-style curries and masala chai, or spice tea. Garam is one of the many words that descend from Proto-Indo-European that has descendants in English, Norwegian, and the Indic languages. Although I couldn't find a date for the origin of garam masala, given the Arabic loanword, it could have been anywhere from 1206 onwards.
Middag or dinner references how the largest meal of the day was historically eaten in the middle of the day. Over time, the largest meal shifted over to the evening meal and lunch became the lighter meal. Food, of course, is a significant part of the Christmas celebration, with Norwegians spending 5,120 krones on food and drink during the festive season. Here's a chart detailing what's eaten for dinner, the English translation, and when they first appeared on Norwegian dinner tables. I'm glad to see that Ribbe has a healthy lead over Pinochet. If you want to replicate the Pinochet experience, have a nibble on a dog bone and then do a shot of table salt. Delicious! According to research scientist Eva Natten Herberg, the prevalence of fish is a relic of Norway's Catholic past. Meat was banned from the beginning of Advent until Christmas Eve, whereas fish was permitted during the same period. She also writes that fresh milk was an important part of Christmas. If a housewife couldn't procure it, she would jokingly be fined by having to spend Christmas Eve in the barn. Like several words in English that begin with the prefix al, such as alchemy, algorithm, and algebra, the word alcohol originally comes from Arabic. Alkahalu is a powder that is used as an eyeliner. In Punjab, we call this powder surma, where it is applied during weddings to ward off the, the evil eye. According to Jens Nordahl of Vinmonopole, during a typical week, 1.4 million litres of alcohol are usually sold. But on the 23rd of December alone, a tremendous 1.2 million litres of alcohol is sold. So what drinks are normally drunk at Christmas? In a country where the potato is practically a food group, it's no surprise that there's a spirit based on potatoes. Aquavit was first attested in 1531, taking its name from the Latin term aqua vitae, or water of life. There are strict rules regarding its production. 95% of the potatoes used in its production must be from Norway. It must be flavored with caraway and or dill. And the final strength must be between 37.5% and 60%. Norwegians drink 1.3 million liters of it annually. And for the Akavit aficionados, April the 13th is Akavit day. Glug is a spiced wine served warm with citrus peel, nuts, and raisins. Spiced wine was consumed in the Roman Empire, where it is known as Hippocras, taking its name after the famous Greek physician. It was first attested in Scandinavia in the 16th century and became a Christmas tradition in Sweden in the late 19th century. Tumte Glug is a popular brand of non-alcoholic glug that has been on Norwegian shelves since 1969. Carbonated beverages have a surprisingly long history. Carbonated water was invented in 1767 in England by Joseph Priestley, and the first flavoured carbonated drink can be traced to Swedish chemist Jens Jakob Bezelius. Julibrus, or Christmas soda, is a Norwegian soft drink that comes in two flavours. The red flavour is based on another soda called Adventure or Fairy Tale Soda. It doesn't taste of anything distinct, so I recommend giving it a miss. Despite the dated packaging, the brown flavour lives up to the name Christmas soda, tasting like a fruity sparkling party in your mouth. This one is from Hamar and Lillehammer, and I can't recommend it enough. For people like me who can't stand the taste of beer, malt beers are a gift from the halls of Valhalla. Norway had a strong tradition, dating back to the Viking age, of homebrewing malt beer with a special type of yeast called kveik. As recently as 1928 in Ulstein, West Norway, children had to take off their shoes in the presence of where the beer was being brewed, remaining silent while their father attended to it. Sadly, it's another tradition that is slowly fading away. These days, it's fallen into the domain of microbreweries. However, elsewhere in Scandinavia, the tradition is being kept alive. Egil's malt extract is a malt beer from Iceland with a gentle sweet licorice flavor. It's mixed with orange soda to make their traditional Christmas drink. In neighboring Sweden, the non-alcoholic Julmust is a darker, more robust beer flavored with spices. Ris creme is a luxurious version of rice pudding, and it's the most popular Christmas dessert in Norway. It's based on a Danish dish that I can't pronounce, which itself is based on a French dish, which I can't pronounce either. Mandal i Gröden, the tradition of hiding an almond in the rice porridge, is believed to have evolved from a 16th century European tradition called King of the Bean, which took place on the 12th day of Christmas. A bean was hidden in a cake, and whoever found it was declared king, or queen, for the evening. They were given a paper crown, could appoint court officials, and whenever they had something to drink, the party cheered, the king drinks! The tradition of gift giving is said to have taken place in Rome during Saturnalia. As Christianity spread, the date that the gift giving occurred changed a handful of times. Initially, it was on New Year's Day. In Norway, there's evidence that Christmas gifts were exchanged in Eirik Jarl's court in the year 1000 AD. At some point, it changed to December 6th or St. Nicholas's Day. It was only in the late 19th century that it changed to Christmas Eve, following the popularity of the 1823 poem The Night Before Christmas and the 1843 book A Christmas Carol. Speaking of unwanted gifts, back in Norway, Svein Knudsen, the Danish king who ruled Norway for a few years, introduced a Christmas tax. Every farmer had to give the king the thigh of a three-year-old ox, a bucket of butter, and around 15 to 20 litres of malt. 
Additionally, each housewife had to offer as much linen as she could wrap around her thumb and middle finger. He is briefly referenced in the play Macbeth as Sveno, the Norwegian king. Today, 64% of Norwegians buy gifts for their loved ones, spending an average of 5,808 krones. In Norway, the only notable tradition after Christmas Eve is julefrokost, or Christmas breakfast. It's a tradition where Christmas leftovers are served alongside an array of goodies, sometimes including, for reasons I don't quite understand, grandiose frozen pizza. The Yule celebration costs the average Norwegian 12,070 krones. The financial impact of shopping for gifts, food and drink alongside the cleaning, decorating, planning and cooking all during a global epidemic and sharp increases in the cost of living is bound to take its toll on the well-being of those on lower incomes. It even has a word, Yulistri or Christmas strife. Loneliness is also worse during Christmas, with 19% of Norwegians experiencing some degree of loneliness. If people are struggling financially and mentally in Norway, there are probably people struggling where you are too. So, wherever you are in the world, why not share your leftovers with someone you've never invited over for dinner before? Now that you've learned about the history of Western Christmas traditions, you'll have plenty to talk about. Now that we've thoroughly examined the origins of every Norwegian Christmas tradition, we can answer an important question. How Norwegian is the modern Norwegian Christmas? Of the 50 traditions in this video, just 9 are exclusively Norwegian. Unsurprisingly, pan-European traditions took the top spot with 10 entries, and pan-Scandinavian traditions had a strong showing with 6 entries. Of the individual countries, Germany dominated with 8 iconic traditions such as the Christmas tree, Christmas markets and advent calendar. So there you have it, the history of Christmas in Norway. Now it's your turn. What are some of your local Christmas traditions? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you really enjoyed the video and have the means, you can help me fund future projects and hopefully even make a living by becoming a member of the channel. Channel members can look forward to early access to new videos, outtakes, a look behind the scenes, extended editions of videos and more. You can find out more by clicking the join button below. And if not, that's totally fine. You can also help me out by clicking like or subscribing to the channel. That lets YouTube know that you really enjoyed the video, and in return, I get a boost in the rankings. If your mind hasn't turned to mush, I encourage you to check out my other content, particularly Christmas in Norway, Easter in Norway, and the travel series I filmed in Japan, which includes my experience climbing Mount Fuji. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.